All right. Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim, Rekar Kodash. Going to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing this word in truth and in sincerity to the Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth who may look like the heathen nations and to the very few sisters that listen and learn. All right, to you, Shalom. I am the brother Yasharala uh, with Great Millstone Chicago. I'm with the brothers from Orlando. If y'all want to introduce yourselves. We'll call you. No, all you. All right, and uh, we're going to uh, flow through the spirit on a topic of is reincarnation biblical all right because according to some of these doctrines that have been taught to our people you know you got the yolo doctrine right who y'all heard that from drake <laughs> you know or uh the alistair crawley do as thou wilt you know because you know they they um want you to do whatever you do in this lifetime because you only live once mentality um you know, they try to put fear in your hearts with the hell doctrine, etc. When reincarnation um, is biblical. All right. And to give you a brief understanding of reincarnation, a uh, re meaning back carnation flesh. All right. You come back in the flesh. Your same spirit comes back. All right. Into a, a new body. Reincarnation. All right, this is not our first rodeo. All right, a few brothers have something you want to start with, and we can get it. I got you. Um, if I can, real quick, uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5, because when you deal with the law, all right, the Lord never said that we would go to hell. All right, when you deal with the punishments of the law, all right, Exodus 20 and 5 reads, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy power am a jealous power. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So when the Lord gave a punishment towards the children of Israel, he didn't prescribe hell as a punishment. All right. That's how we know that it's a Christian narrative and it's not biblical. All right. The Lord said that he would visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. And when you go into the Ezekiel, the uh, 18th chapter, you got it. That's the spirit. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. It says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wicked, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So that is sound like a contradiction. Oh, the Bible contradicted it. So Exodus said that they were going to uh, the father's sins were going to fall on the children. But here it says that the soul that sinneth it shall die. The the father's sin doesn't fall on the children, you know, the son's sin. But with the understanding of the scriptures. All right. You come back. All right. Through through your forefathers. All right. If I can get this, because life is like a circle. You know, you ever heard that expression, the circle of life? That's exactly how the Heavenly Father has it. You know, you, you come on the earth, you know, you do, you play out your lot, whether you be righteous or wicked. If you be wicked, once you die in that vessel, you come back like the brother read in Exodus every third and fourth generation. All right, you have to pay for those, and you have to pay for the sins that you've done in that past life. So this is uh, Second Edges chapter 5 and 42. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as there is no slackness of the last, even even so there is no swiftness of the first. All right, and I have this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 15 to back mm -hmm. that up. Mm -hmm. Hold up real quick. When you go to Ecclesiastes, uh, before you get that one, this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that hath been it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? And that includes life, all right? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, 
neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. All right, so there's no new thing under the sun. All these things that we see on the earth, including life itself, all right, this is why you have people who are born blind. You know, this is not their only life, and the only life that they have is the one that they get to be blind in. They just drew the shortest straw, and they the, they the blind person for their one life. That would be that wouldn't be un, that wouldn't be righteous. All right, that wouldn't be fair that a, a person's one life if they if they lived a life this their only life and they never sinned. All right, and then they're born blind or maimed. That ain't it doesn't make sense. But when you understand reincarnation, it begins to be more clear. You got that. This is our Ecclesiastes three and fifteen. That which have been is now. And that which is to be have already been. And the Heavenly Father required that which is past. And moreover, I saw the I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Alright, what is that place under the sun? Alright, that place is, is, is the earth. Alright, it says again, and moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment, which is the earth, that wickedness was there, and that the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. All right, so judgment plays out here on earth. All right, when you have to pay, when, like we've been explaining from the beginning, you have to pay for the sins that you've done in your past life, in your third and fourth generation. All right, you come back through that, through your seed line. All right, that's why I said uh, um, the son shall pay for the sins because essentially you are your forefathers, you know, back in the third and fourth generation. And you have to pay for what you've done in that past life. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody grab John 9 real quick. While I look this up. Uh, <laughs> so this is yeah, uh, perfect. John the ninth chapter, and I'll start at the first verse. And as Yahweh passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, "Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind?" Verse three, and, and notice how Yahweh answers him. He doesn't say you err not knowing the scriptures. Of course, this is this man's one only life. No, the, this is how the Lord responded. Verse 3, Yahweh shall answer, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents. And the brother brought out the precept that the, the parents, the sons will never be punished, or the children will never be punished for the sins of the parents. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So Yahweh shall responded to their question by saying, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents. But that the works of Yahweh Shemah should be manifest in him. Now Yahweh Shah knows these things, so he would have told them, he would have rebuked them. If they were going off by saying, Look, did this man sin on his parents? He would have said, You erred not knowing the scriptures, like he said in Matthew the 22nd chapter. Alright, but he didn't. Why? Because our people had already understood the process of reincarnation. Even when you deal with Yahweh Shah being on the earth, the one they ignorantly called Jesus, they said, Who might this man be? Some say he's Elias. Now, how would that be possible if you only live one time? Our people had already understood the process of reincarnation in the scriptures. That's right. I had, um, well, before I touch on this, because there's a specific individual that proves reincarnation, which would be uh, the prophet Elijah. But um, if somebody can grab... I think it's uh, Second Ezra, the first chapter, around like the 38th verse. And then we could uh, touch on this because, hey, the Lord, all right, well, it, everybody falls in their lot. You know, whoever was wicked in the past, guess what? They come back being wicked. Whoever was righteous in the past, they come back righteous, etc. What did the, uh, the ones, what did they say? Uh, when they were trying to crucify Yahweh Shai, they said, let his blood pee upon us and uh, and uh, our children. Well, when did his blood ever come upon them? You know, it's going to come upon them when they come. Well, when they're coming back now, when before our Lord and Savior returns, you know, they have to pay for what they had done. Um, let me see. I think it's like 30. Yup. Yup. Uh, let's read 38 down to 40. All right, this is our first Edris chapter, second Edris chapter one and verse 38. And now, brother, behold with <clears throat> glory and see the people that come from the east unto whom I get. I will give for leaders, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Oseas, Amos and Micah, 
Joel, Obadiah, and Jonas, Nahum, Abekuk, Sophianus, Agius, Zachary, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So the Lord is going to send us leaders. And who's the first ones he start off with? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Mm -hmm. They had already been. They had already been uh, passed. So how are he's going to send them back for leaders? Coming back in the reincarnation. Ooh, as a matter of fact, hold on. Let me pull this up right quick. Let me pull this up. It's, uh, I think it's in Luke. Yup, here we go. This is uh, Luke 22 and 31. Check this out. This is Yahawashai speaking to Peter. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we check this out this this is the point verse 32 but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brother uh thy brethren all right so when did when did um when did peter ever have to convert when did he ever have to come back into the truth? All right. He already knew he was an Israelite, you know. So in a nutshell, Yahweh Shai is telling Peter, hey, when you wake up back into this truth, when you come back in the reincarnation, when you come back to this truth, when you convert. All right. When you come back to who, who you are, your nationality, your heritage, strengthen thy brethren. All right. But Peter knew he was an Israelite. He knew the Lord, the name, all right, et cetera, right? So this was, in a sense, him telling him, hey, when you come back in the reincarnation, when you convert, when you come back, strengthen thy brethren, teach them this word, build them up, all right? Because we all come back. If I could, if I could get these precepts, because that sentiment was said to multiple prophets. You know, the Lord told multiple prophets they would have to come back and stand in their light in the latter days. This is our Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. At least I come and smite the earth with a curse. So in, in, this, in, this, in this sense, when did Elijah come back? Elijah was already dead. So when it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and great dreadful day of the Lord. What is that talking about? You know, how could Elijah come back before the great and dreadful day of the Lord if he's already passed, if he'd already been translated? Mm -hmm. Let's get this one in um, Revelation. Let me slide it. This is uh, Daniel chapter 12, and verse 13. It says, But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. And this is the prophet Daniel. The Lord told him to go, go his way until the end be. All right, he's going to rest, means he, meaning he's going to pass away. He's going to die. All right. But it says, and stand in thy lot at the end of days. All right. And we know that during Daniel's time, it wasn't the end of days. All right. We're living in the end of days today. So that would mean that Daniel will have to come back and he will have to be living in these times, which proves reincarnation. Because Daniel couldn't possibly be living at the end of the days. He was living during the, during the, the, the peak, the head of the statue in his time. And you have to remember that when the Lord gave the law, statutes, and commandments to the children of Israel, he never told them it was going to hell, ever. When you deal with Saul, when Saul got put to death, Ooh. Samuel said, what? You're going to be in the same place that I'm at. You and your brother, you and your son, excuse me, Salakia, you and your son are going to be with me where I'm at, not hell. And they were considered wicked. This shows you, this cuts hell in general. Mm -hmm. But when you deal with the law, statutes, and commandments and how the Lord punished us as a nation of people, he said he would visit the iniquities in the third and fourth generation. Why would he do that if the soul that sinneth it shall die? Because that soul is coming back in the third and fourth generation. It's not hard, but people have been seduced by Christianity so much that they believe what's been told to them, man. And they haven't studied for themselves. Uh, real quick, the land back off the point the brother was making of examples of the Lord telling uh, prophets about being uh, present in the end days. 
This is Revelation chapter 10 and 10. And I took the little book, and this is uh, dealing with John. All mm -hmm. right, John was on the island of Patmos. All right, that's where he uh, lived out the rest of his life, if you will. All right, he received the prophecies of, of Revelation. All right. All right, there is no other account of him leaving that place and right. prophesying again. This is Revelation 10 and 10. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my bit, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Mm. When did this happen? Because Christianity is on trial at this point. The things that we're saying through the spirit, we're bringing out precepts to back it up. Christianity has no answer for these things. They'll tell you that people go to hell and burn forever. When the Lord didn't tell the children of Israel about going to hell and burning forever. Right. That's a uh, what's that? Uh, they call it that Greek, Greek mythology, mythology, Zeus and Hades right. and all that BS nonsense. Look, I got a quick scripture to prove hell does not exist. All right. Let's uh, go to Genesis, the second chapter. Verse one gives you the creation, right? Verse two or I mean, chapter one gives you the creation. Chapter 2 goes into the day of rest, the Sabbath. So let's see what Genesis 2 and 1 says. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Where's hell at in there? It Well, if hell's a place, it had to be written in creation. Right. It had to have been created. So where is it at? I'll give you the answer. It's not in there. <laughs> All right. So look, it, with just simple logic, Genesis two and one, the heavens and the it don't say the heavens and the earth and hell were finished. No, it says the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them, everything that pertains to them. That's it. That's all. And then on the seventh day, they rested. So you can't find hell. All right. When you actually understand hell. OK, it goes into a, an affliction, right. like a condition, which Jonah, he prayed right. out of the belly of uh, the, the fish, which okay. he, he caught. You got it. Mm -hmm. This is Jonah chapter two and verse one. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou heardest my voice. Ooh. Why did David say, if I make my uh, bed in heaven? No, no, if I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. How is God going to be in hell? I got you. You, you got it. This is our Psalms 139 and verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If mm -hmm. I take the winds of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold. That's a beautiful point because Christianity says hell is the separation of the presence of God. <laughs> That's what they say, right? God doesn't hear your prayers right. in hell. Well, he heard Jonah's. And Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish, which he called a hell. And King David just said that if he did make his bed in hell, the Lord would be there with him. Showing you that hell is an affliction. It's not a place where people go and burn forever. Imagine, listen to the Christian doctrine. Just cut all, trim all the fat and just listen to the, sh the straight skinny of what they're telling you. They're telling you that people go and they burn forever with one, the one life that they live. They blow that one life. They go and burn somewhere forever. Right. What kind of sense does that make? That and it, and that's uh, our God is a righteous God, right? He's a just God. So let's say the people who perished during the time of the flood, right? They never had a chance to repent. You know, they never had the, the Yahweh Shai um, to 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 be atoned for their sins, etc. But guess what? All those people who perished in the flood. It came back in the reincarnation. Absolutely. You know? Because you let Christianity tell you, them same people that drowned in the flood, they've been burning in hell since since the right. flood. Right. Damn. 
that's messed up. They ain't had no chance. Where's the mercy in that? The Lord talks about how he delights in mercy all throughout the scriptures. But when you listen to that Christian narrative, it don't match with what the scriptures talk about. Mm -hmm. That everlasting mercy. Because you live, you die, you come back. Matter of fact, this is 2nd uh, Edges 14 and 35. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. Perfect. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest. And the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Hey, this doctrine would be a doctrine you would want to uh, be true. Because if not, your ass going to burn in <laughs> Let's say if the, the hell doctrine is true, your ass going to burn in hell for eternity. Hey, the Lord is gonna, the Lord is going <laughs> to, which that's not merciful at all. You know, but look, the Lord lets us come back in the reincarnation. We live out our judgment, right? He's a fair God. Right. That would not be fair. You had anything else in that? That was it on Second Edges 14. I got something real quick. Going back into reincarnation, since we're in Second Ezra, I'm going to go to 16 and 17. Prophet Ezra, he said, woe is me. Woe is me, which means destruction is me. You know, destruction, which when you read up in that chapter, he's seen the... The plagues, the fire, all right, which are the which would be the um, the nuclear missiles, all right, the day of judgment. So he's saying destruction is to me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? So here it is. He's seeing the future prophecy, but he in his mind knows that he's going to be here in right. the reincarnation. He's like, damn, who's going to deliver me in those days? He's seeing all the he's seeing the end time visions. So he's like, who shall deliver me in those days? As a matter of fact, I got one more. Habakkuk 3. All right, check this out. I'm going to get to the point. You know, when you read, he was like, were you mad at the fish? Were you mad at the waters, etc.?" right? He's seen the end time too. This is Habakkuk 3 and 16. When I, when I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. So he's like, man, when all this is happening, man, I hope I'm at, I'm in the spirit realm when this is going on. He like I might he's like that I might rest in the day of trouble. So Habakkuk seen seen all of this and he's like, man, yo, I'd rather be in this. Please, God, let me be in the spirit realm when this is happening, because this is crazy. You know, hey, if I may say this, because it was common, common knowledge back in that day that the Lord deals in reincarnation. You know, that's why men spoke like this. That's why they spoke about them coming back again, because they knew they had to come and come back again. Mm -hmm. This whole YOLO, YOLO mentality is a new thing in the earth. You know, that came in, in, in place when Esau Edom came into power and the whole YOLO spirit. Because like it says in uh, Wisdom of Solomon in the second chapter, they don't believe they have a resurrection of life. You know, it's, it's also in 2 Maccabees, the seventh chapter. You know, these devils have no resurrect, resurrection of life, you know, and they don't want to uh, um, be accountable for all their sins that they've committed in, in, in their pa present lives. So therefore, they don't want reincarnation to be real, you know. But I got this right here. This is uh, Job 19. In verse 25, it says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And mm -hmm. though after my skin, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So Job, which is also a prophet, he said, All and though after my skin worms destroy this body, meaning he will go down into the grave, and after you go down to the grave, the worms, you know, they they they, they eat on your body. It says, yet in my flesh I shall see God. How is that so if the worms are going to uh, uh, destroy his body? He will have to come back in the reincarnation. It only makes sense. Mm -hmm. Since you read that, um, that Malachi, the fourth chapter, right? Elijah was going to come back. Let's, nah, let's check this out. Even Yahweh Shai, who the wrote ignorantly calls Jesus, he even told if you read the scriptures, he lets you know that John the Baptist is Elijah, you know, as a matter of fact, somebody look up the one where he he asked 
to his disciples, who do men say that I am? I got you. All right. And I'm going to read this. This is Luke 1. All right. And so this is uh, speaking on John the Baptist. I'm going to read 13. It said, but the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John. Right. John the Baptist. I'm going to get to the point. No, nope, you know what? I'm going to have to read. It says, and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of Yahweh the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Who else had the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb? Oh, he was born with the Spirit. Oh, well, I guess John the Baptist was born with uh, Immaculate as well. But that's not the case. His father was uh, Zacharias, right? All right. Um, listen to this. This is the same thing that's said in uh, Malachi 4. It says, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to Yahweh, the Lord their God. And here's the point. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, which is Elijah. Wait a minute. So John is going to have the spirit and power of Elijah. Yep. That sounds like Elijah coming back in the reincarnation in the new, the same spirit, the spirit of Elijah, but coming in the new flesh, a new body. Right. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And that's the same thing that we read in Malachi, the fourth chapter. Right. There you have it. And if you can't receive it, he came back as Alba Bivens. All right. To land back off that, this is Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. For all the prophets and the law prophesy until John. And if ye will receive it. Right. If you can't understand this. Because right. not a lot of people can understand this. Right. Mm -hmm. This is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Ooh. That was the first time he told him. Right. I'm going to get the second account. All right. This is uh, Matthew 17 and 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias, which is Elijah, must come first? Because the scribes knew the scriptures. They understood Malachi, the first chapter that Elijah will come before the, 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 uh, the day, right? So the disciples, they were inquiring, why do they say he got to come first? Because they knew the scriptures, right? right? Let's keep on reading. You can go ahead and get what you need. It says, And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias, Elijah is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Verse 13. Then the disciples understood. Now they received it. Right. They didn't understand it. Uh, what was that? Matthew 11. They didn't understand it then. But they understood it when he told them this time. All right. It says, then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. But the whole context was Elijah returning. So they understood, damn, Elijah was John the Baptist. Then it registered. So there goes reincarnation for you. I got another one. Taught by our Lord and Savior. I got another one to back up reincarnation. This is uh, Psalms 104 and verse 30. 
verse 29, it says, Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. And that's how the circle of life goes. You know, you live, you die, your body goes back into the earth, your spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father, and every third and fourth generation you come back. You know, mm -hmm. and the Lord renews the face of the earth. And it's just as simple as that. You know, the the the, the world is overcomplicated. The scriptures, man, in its entirety. The, the world is overcomplicated, the circle of life. It's very simple. You know, you, you live, you, you you live if you live righteously or you live wickedly, you die and you come back every third and fourth generation and you pay your judgment plays out in that lifetime. It's very simple, you know. Yep. I have one real quick because what does the scripture say in Ecclesiastes um, 1? I got it. It says, uh, well, I think it's like 10. 1 and 9. Uh, Let me see. Yeah, because the brother read that, but verse 11 is the point. Read verse 11. Now, we read earlier how it says there's nothing new under the sun. The things of the past or of now, etc. Right? Go read verse eleven. This is our Ecclesiastes one and eleven. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come thereafter. Right. So when you come back in the reincarnation, you don't remember, oh, I was so and so. I did this and that. No, you basically come back with your hard drive but Wiped. Mm -hmm. He just get restored, you know, back to default. Back to reset, yeah. You back, come back out. Wah! You don't remember nothing. You know what I'm saying? But it's still the same spirit, right? Now check this out. In John one, I believe it was the scribes and the the chief priests came to Elijah. Look what they asked him. John one and twenty one, and they asked him. What then? You know, hold on. Let me read up. Let me see what. Let's go to John 1 and let's see what. Uh, I'll start at 19. And this is the record of John. This is John the Baptist. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Well, damn, they knew he was John. Why are they asking him, who are you? Right. Knew he was John. But check this out. Verse 20. And he confessed and denied and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Mashiach. He's basically saying, I'm not the one to come, basically. I'm not the, you know, the anointed one. 21. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Which, again, the scriptures we read, he was Elijah, but he didn't know he was Elijah because there is no remembrance of former things. If they, if they, the people didn't understand reincarnation, why would they even have asked this? Are you one of those prophets? Why would they ask them? Because they understood that the you come back in the reincarnation. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, you got that one where they uh, ask who Yahweh Shai was. Yeah. You know, the one where he says, uh, you got it. Uh, Mark 8, verse 27. And Yahweh Shai went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying, uh, saying unto them, whom do men say that I am? And they answered John the Baptist. But some say Elias and others, one of the prophets. Right. So Yahweh Shai was like, who do the people think I am? They like, man, he he probably John the Baptist. He, uh, which John was living during the same time, you know. Uh, I, I I think I believe he was already put to death, but others were saying he's Elijah. Others are saying he's that prophet. So they probably like, man, he probably Jeremiah. He probably Malachi. He probably. How would they? Why would they even be saying these things? Because they understood reincarnation. They understood Yahweh Shai was a great man. They're like, man, he probably wanted them prophets coming back, right. you know. But today, guess what? You're taught uh, plantation Christianity, the same stuff we've been taught since our people been in captivity, which 
Reincarnation isn't a part of that doctrine. Uh, real quick, this is Jude chapter 1 and verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, Ooh, though ye once, once knew, knew this, this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of, out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And that goes to show you that, again, this is about, even uh, John the sixth chapter, the Lord said he would raise up those men in the last days. All right? The, the reincarnation is a part of our heritage. It's, it's true. It's really just true. All right. But for uh, edification's sake, this is a part of our heritage. We were never told that we were going to go to hell forever. We were never told that at all. When the Lord said that he was going to punish us, he would send a nation against us. We would go into captivity. He would deliver us. That was the routine for the Israelites. Not going to hell and burning forever. All right. And that's why we understand through the spirit that this is a Christian narrative, that Christianity is not biblical. All right. You have Christianity and you have the Bible and that's two different things. Mm -hmm. This is why they quote one verse and then they go on a tangent, but they never really tell you what's actually in the book. You got enough. I got another one. This is our Revelation chapter one and verse seven. It mm -hmm. says, behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. Beautiful. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so are men. So when the Lord comes back, it says, all I, uh, it says all eyes are going to see him, even those who pierced him. You know, we know that Yahweh Shah was crucified during, during the Roman captivity. So how would this be so? How would the eyes of those who pierced him be able to see him in his, his return in the latter days? That's because those those... Once who pierce them, they're about 2,000 and right. about 50 years plus old, right. still living today, looking at Show me the evidence, one of the man. extras in the thriller. Right, <laughs> right, right. That's because they're coming back into reincarnation. You see? But uh, that's all I had. If anybody had anything else, that's it, bro. Um, we, I, we pretty much that's it. covered for the most part. You know, and make it say basis. something else. Make it say something else. Right. Go through all of these precepts and find another alternative route. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there is no other breakdown. What's that Occam's razor? The simplest answer to oh, uh, okay. often is the, the the real answer, the true answer. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Christianity, your pastor never brought these precepts out. Why is that? Because it doesn't match with their narrative, and when it don't match with their narrative, they don't touch these scriptures. That's how you it's sealed, brother. Right, right. The book is sealed. But the scriptures say the Lord unlocked the seals, the understanding. So why are they paying you tithes then? If it's sealed and you don't know you don't know what's going on with the book, why are they paying you tithes? Mm -hmm. You know, say he was lying. I got I got one more for you. This is, uh, Matthew nineteen and verse twenty eight. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. He also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, and regeneration is the same thing as reincarnation. All right, and those who follow Yahweh Shai in the re regeneration, meaning the reincarnation, all right, are going to be those who sit upon the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, that's reincarnation right there in the cell. You know? Yeah. See, and then basically, you know, reincarnation kills. It, it it destroys a lot of false doctrines the hell doctrine you know which that's a, a major doctrine that's pushed on, on our people you know but um other than that you know the the point was made and lord willing those who were meant to be edified were because at the end of the day everybody's not meant to receive this truth all right um many are called few are chosen all right. So hopefully those who are meant to be edified were to next time. We're going to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Mekar Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing this word in truth and in sincerity. To the Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth who may look like the heathen nations. And to the very few sisters that listen and learn to you, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.
and the bottom of the ball. Bye.